here's your wrestling news for August 25th, 2021. And your headlines for today include Becky Lynch heel turn explained who's responsible. Former WWE champion not cleared to compete. What's the plan for Karrion Cross's new look on Raw? I keep my promises, top WWE superstar on children crying after SummerSlam. Cena better not beat me, top Raw superstar calls out the 16-time world champion. Samoa Joe confirms return to the main roster could happen, and more. We are kicking off today with SummerSlam 2021 as Becky Lynch returned to WWE last Saturday, but her victory over Bianca Belair has left fans divided. Not only did Lynch win the SmackDown Women's title on her first night back, but she squashed Belair, undoing a lot of her momentum over the past year. It's been reported that Lynch's last-minute return is part of a heel turn for her character, and this is something the man wanted to happen. According to Dave Meltzer, Lynch herself requested to turn heel at SummerSlam, and her request was granted by Vince McMahon. If Lynch wanted fans to hate her, then she definitely succeeded by squashing Bianca Belair at SummerSlam. And we'll have to see what the new SmackDown Women's Champion has to say on this Friday's edition of The Blue Brand. SummerSlam also saw an appearance by the fiend Bray Wyatt, who didn't show up in person, but appeared on a sign held by a fan. Despite his release from WWE last month, Wyatt is still massively popular with fans as chants of We Want Wyatt are a weekly occurrence on Raw. During SummerSlam, that fan sign was confiscated by security, and we now know a bit more about what happened. On Twitter, the fan, who goes by 510 Man Deep, confirmed it took him 30 hours to draw the sign and was threatened by security that he'd be ejected from SummerSlam if he didn't hand it over. Mandeep also noted that the sign was eventually given back after the show and called Wyatt the most creative wrestler ever. Wyatt has seen the sign as he retweeted a tweet during SummerSlam about it, and although Mandeep got the sign back, many believe it shouldn't have been taken in the first place. One person who didn't appear at SummerSlam in person or as a sign was Kofi Kingston, who was also missing during Monday Night Raw. Kofi's absence was noted by fans when Xavier Woods came out without him each time, and there's a reason why he hasn't been around. According to PW Insider, the former WWE champion isn't cleared to compete, and was originally meant to be a part of the Pure Life Water bid at SummerSlam, but was later pulled. The report added that Kofi wasn't on the road at all during SummerSlam weekend, but no further details have been given regarding his condition. We are hoping for a swift recovery for Kofi as Raw needs a veteran like him, and time will tell when he can work alongside Woods once again. Last week, WWE trademarked the name Day One, and though many expected it to be some new show on the network in Peacock, that isn't the case. Thanks to a local commercial in Atlanta, Georgia, we now know that WWE Day One will be a brand new pay-per-view by the company that'll happen on January 1st, 2022. Day One will mark WWE's first pay-per-view in the state of Georgia since Survivor Series 2015, where Roman Reigns won his first WWE World title, only to lose the title in minutes to Mr. Money in the Bank, Sheamus. Tickets for Day 1 will go on sale at 10 a.m. Eastern this Friday, and we'll have to see what matches are confirmed as the first show of 2022 approaches. Over to NXT now, as with the departure of a ton of talent in recent weeks, the gold brand is looking to make new stars, and they've got big plans for Carmelo Hayes. On this week's NXT, Hayes won the breakout tournament, defeating Odyssey Jones in the finals, after defeating Josh Briggs and Duke Hudson to advance to the finals. Post-match, Hayes says it's too early to decide who he'll face for his guaranteed title shot, but this win is a huge feather in the cap for the 27-year-old breakout star. We know for a fact that Hayes won't be challenging million-dollar champion Cameron Grimes, who won the gold at TakeOver 36 from LA Knight. On NXT, Grimes and Ted DiBiase Sr. celebrated their win, and when Ted DiBiase went to leave, Grimes offered the title back. Taking the title, DiBiase, who was sat in his limousine, handed the gold back to Grimes, a rare sign of generosity from the Million Dollar Man, until Grimes realized that Ted had switched the real title with a WWE Shop.com replica. Laughing off maniacally as he was driven away, DiBiase now holds the real title once more, leaving Grimes to figure out what's next for his career on the gold brand. Back to SummerSlam, and though John Cena walked into Allegiant Stadium with the hope of becoming a 17-time WWE World Champion, that isn't what happened. Instead, Roman Reigns toppled Big Match John to keep his Universal title, a win that hasn't gone down well with some members of the WWE Universe. 
On the official Twitter for BR Wrestling, a young fan can be seen watching the SummerSlam main event decked in Cena merchandise and breaks down crying when Reigns wins the match. The young fan's reaction has since gone viral, and now Roman Reigns has responded, saying that the tribal chief keeps his promises, calling himself a man of his word. Roman Reigns walked into SummerSlam with the promise to beat John Cena, and he did exactly that, as this fan, like countless others, will have no choice but to acknowledge the head of the table after defeating one of WWE's all-time greats. Perhaps Cena will eventually become a 17-time world champion, but it wasn't meant to be last week, and won't be happening anytime soon if Charlotte Flair has anything to do with it. With 12 women's titles to her name, Charlotte is WWE's most decorated female superstar ever, and doesn't want to see Cena beat her father's record tying 16 reigns as world champion. Speaking on Renee Paquette's Oral Sessions podcast before SummerSlam, Charlotte was asked if she'd like to one day eclipse her father's record, saying, I think I want to, I don't know, because I don't know what that means. Like if I surpass, are then they gonna say it's Charlotte's dad? Yes, I'm gonna be a 16-time world's champion one day? 17-time? Cena better not beat me before. With 12 reigns under her belt and no signs of slowing down, it's highly likely that Charlotte will one day become a 16 and later 17-time champion, but she wants to get to that historic accolade before Cena gets one more title victory on his resume. Over to Raw next as Karrion Cross squashed Ricochet on this week's show and got some fresh gear complete with a new mask. Donning a full-face metal helmet and leather straps around his chest, this new look certainly sets Cross apart from everyone else in WWE, which is what the company is hoping for. On Twitter, Andrew Zarian explained that Cross's new look is to help sell merchandise, saying everything and everyone must be marketable. For the past month, Cross has been competing on both Raw and NXT, but according to PW Insider, Cross is now a full-time superstar of the Red Brand, which explains why he wasn't on last night's NXT. Cross may no longer be the NXT champion, but he is picking up more and more wins, and if this new look does result in more merch sales, then fans can expect Cross to keep moving up the card. Cross lost the NXT Championship at Sunday's TakeOver 36 to Samoa Joe in Joe's first match in over a year. After suffering a concussion in early 2020, Joe served as a commentator before his release in June and subsequent return to NXT as William Regal's enforcer. Clearly, the move back to NXT has done wonders for the first-ever three-time NXT champion, but in an interview with So Catch by Hal 2, Joe didn't rule out a return to the main roster. He said, that's always in the cards. Let's be honest, Raw and SmackDown and NXT are the three rotating brands in WWE. I think at this point, especially in the last decade, you can say anything can happen. As the new NXT champion, Joe won't be going to any other brands anytime soon, but despite what many consider an underwhelming main roster tenure, don't be too surprised if the submission specialist one day competes on Raw or SmackDown again. For the past month or so, Baron Corbin has been in a downward spiral, all stemming from losing his King of the Ring moniker. During SummerSlam weekend, though, Corbin's luck turned around as he won some quick cash in a casino, and this may be the start of big things to come for the former US champion. That's according to PW Insider, who report that a story twist is coming up for Corbin on this week's SmackDown, which will feature some of his adventures in Sin City. They report, we are told the Baron Corbin Las Vegas deal will be a WWE social media storyline that will play out all week before SmackDown, at which point there will be some sort of story twist. WWE apparently filmed a lot of content with Corbin in Vegas over the weekend. It was also reported that at one point, WWE planned on filming content with Chris Angel, but there's no word as to whether that actually happened. It seems that Corbin's luck may finally be turning around, and that this new direction for him will be in full swing come this Friday's show. And we're ending with Indy Hartwell and Dexter Loomis, who are engaged to be married, and now we have a date for the happy couple. During last night's show, it was confirmed that the pair will be wedded on September 14th, but didn't give a location for the ceremony. Given that the 14th is a Tuesday, expect the ceremony to happen during NXT. But if we know one thing of pro wrestling weddings, it's that things never go quite as planned, and we expect the Hartwell Loomis nuptials will be no different. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. 
Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.